Hey, what's up team? Eddie Gray here. Logic Pro 11 has landed. As we know, it's been about a week or so, and I've been thinking about a hack. How can we implement a potential guitar player into our session players? So, if you want to watch it, you know what to do. Hit the music. Alright, so truth be told, I saw someone else do this on YouTube, a guy named Greg or something, and I thought, hmm, I can probably do that and probably utilize some other tricks. So here we are, I'm going to dovetail off of his idea. Here we have a funk track, check it out. So we're going to go ahead and hack a session guitarist by adding a keyboard player. I'll change the player style to broken chords. Now, of course, we don't want a piano player. We want to utilize a guitar player. So I'm going to go ahead and choose phasing guitar plugs. All right, let's see what we have. All right, so because the session player region is following the chord track, we have the ability to create somewhat of a realistic guitar track, but I'm, I kind of want to take this a step further, right? So I was thinking we can take third party guitar chords. I've bookmarked these. And so the first chord is C major seven. All right, I'll go ahead and chop that up a little bit. Let's bring in a minor seven, which is right here. Again, we'll edit that appropriately. And then an E7 chord. Now, I don't have an E7 per se, but I do have an E chord. So let's see how all of this fits. Here we go. Okay, I'm loving it. I'm going to go ahead and hit Command D to duplicate this track. I'll duplicate this region. And then the next time it plays, we're going to use Melodyne in order to hack that E7. So let's go ahead and drop in Melodyne here. Let's go ahead and transfer the audio. Here we go. All right, now it only picked up one note and because of that, I'm gonna go to algorithm up here and I will select polyphonic sustain. Let's redetect. All right, now we have the notes that we need and off the top of my head, I don't uh, know theory. I've studied it to a great degree, but in order for me to get into it, I have to use a tool, something like Suggestor 2 or Captain Chords. And so if I jump in here really quick and I drop in an E7 chord, you can see that we have an E, a G sharp, a B, and a D. All right, so we're going to take this E here and we're going to make it a D. It very well could sit the next octave up, so let's go ahead and do that. And I think I'm going to stretch out the note, so I'm going to hold Option and just stretch this out a little bit. All right, perfect. So then now, I'm just going to go ahead and bounce that to audio so I don't have to deal with Melodyne. All right, using the Marquee tool, I'll create a selection. Command R that. And now we have something that feels a little bit more like guitar rock. Here we go. Something else that you can do is take a guitar muted loop. This could be third party. This could be within logic. Here, check this out. Okay, and we're going to drop that into a sampler. So pull up quick sampler and then just simply drag this into the original category. The guitar player will play different notes. This is in a minor key, but if I bring in the pattern region, we can really create something interesting and something special simply just utilizing guitar mutes. So let's start off like this. Uh, okay, let's find a second complementary line. Okay, that's good there. I'll create 32 steps to um, just avoid repetition. 
Now you're gonna wanna insert a compressor to make sure that the guitar line really pokes out. And this is personally when I like to use auto gain so I can make sure that the line is sticking out. Check it out. So then on top of that, if we go to amps and pedals, stomp boxes, there's a wide array of great pitch plugins. Uh, if you go under filter, you have auto funk and classic wah, and those are really going to, uh, to complement single muted guitar lines like this. So let's go ahead and pull this up. All right, let's see what this sounds like. Okay, and then just to avoid any robotic feels, I'm gonna control click within the pattern sequence and I'm going to randomize the characteristic of, in this case, velocity. So let's click on velocity, control click here, and let's randomize it a little bit. The last thing you want is the machine gun effect as it relates to samples, especially if they haven't been deeply sampled. So let's check this out. And so that's a really good way to create a sense of realism without necessarily playing guitar. Grab yourself uh, some one-shot chords from the internet. There's a bunch of great ones out there. Put a little reverb, equalize, they'll sound amazing within a track. If you go into the loop browser and simply type in muted guitar, there's a bunch of great samples here that you can utilize as well. Just drop them into quick sampler. Again, add compression to allow the notes to stick out a little bit. And then probably the final trick, just for fun, it may work, it may not, utilizing an arpeggiator with the muted guitar notes could sound pretty interesting. So in order to really make use of this, I'm gonna go ahead and convert all of this stuff here to MIDI. I'll hit Command J to join the regions, P to open up the piano roll. So I'm gonna hit Command J and join all of these various regions. Now, if you're tired of hearing the notes play as you select them, go ahead and select MIDI out and that will no longer be a problem. And so the idea here is that we have these um, lines playing in an alternate fashion. Okay, so I'm gonna hit Command A and I want all of these MIDI events to basically connect. So I'll hit Shift forward slash and now everything is connecting the way I want it to. And uh, let's turn on that arpeggiator and let's see what this sounds like. Yeah. Now, super important with the arpeggiator that instead of just letting it run, um, don't select live, select the grid. There's a bunch of great presets in here that'll really get your guitar to sing. Let me just select Grooving Velocity 07. All right, let's check this out within the mix. And then I guess just the last thing I'll say is to never be afraid to use a little bit of delay on a guitar. It can really complement it just fine. So I'm gonna hit Shift Command D to open up a summing stack. That way I can process both of these in tandem. And then we'll simply select the stock delay, which in my opinion sounds good nine out of 10 times, um, especially with these settings. You might wanna take a screenshot of that. And let's check this out. What can I say, Logic Pro 11 is here to stay. I am very excited personally about some of the adventures in AI. And I can't say too much, but I can tell you that I have seen the motherland and where this program is going is a beautiful, beautiful place. So stay tuned. If you wanna learn more about me and what I'm up to, go ahead and check out all the various links inside of the description. As always, stay up, stay happy, stay focused on what you want. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care. See ya.